What percentage of the Salt Lake City is Mormon? I don't know what the percentage is now. Uh, I think I used to know growing up, but if I had to get, it's changed a lot because over the last 15 years, a lot of tech companies have moved here. So a lot of Californians, a lot of people mm-hmm. coming in. Um, call it 20 years ago, I would say 85%. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. It's, it's a high number. It's probably, if you live in a neighborhood, at least one of your neighbors is going to be LDS. And it's pretty rare that they're not. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's, if there's a 300 houses in a neighborhood, maybe five or 10 of them aren't members of the church. Um, and so it's, it's funny because you just, you grow up just thinking everybody's Mormon. Yeah. I treat everybody like they're Mormon. Mm-hmm. And it's nothing crazy. Like you guys have seen how, what Mormons are about. We're not what everybody thinks we are. Dude, some of the greatest people I know are Mormon. Mm-hmm. They just like the values that you guys have and the pureness, you could say, at least where we're at is, you know, I don't know a single person really that doesn't drink alcohol. And everyone here has such a great time without alcohol. Yeah. And it makes you it's kind so of, refreshing. It, yeah. It makes you kind of be like, oh, wow. Yeah, you don't need a drink to have a good time. It's and then 66%. 66%. Yeah. I, I'm, you know, that's not. Like the core belief, do Mormon? No, I mean that's the thing is that Mormon beliefs are very simple, guys. It's it's all stuff that we, as just trying to be a good person, do anyways. Mm. So whether you're Mormon or not, do you want to kill somebody? No. I mean, sometimes we feel like it, but are you going to kill somebody? No. Are you going to lie, cheat, steal, rob, um, use drugs? It's all the stuff that we're told not to do as kids. The alcohol thing um, is a big one, and it's it's a big no no. And I've seen firsthand why it destroys people. Yeah, it just destroys people. It's really hard for a lot of people to drink responsibly. Uh, my father-in-law is an alcoholic, and watching him is just so sad because he just it literally is disintegrating his body. It's just poison. Mm-hmm. So that's a it's a it's a rule that I agree with um, across the board. Uh, really, honestly, we don't have any doctrine that I don't think any of you guys would wouldn't agree with. Right. It's all basic. Just be good person. Yeah. And it's a really strong v- uh, family values. So we growing up in the church are. Are big on family, big on family history, finding out who, like what our lineage is, where we came from, and respecting the past um, and learning from it. And then also, uh, you know, Mormons generally have more kids than most people. It's, I think, the average, probably four or five kids in each house. You think, go out of state, it's like one or two. I think uh, the craziest thing about Mormons is I haven't met an unsuccessful Mormon. Yeah. It's like every single. Mormon that I have met has their own business or is a go-getter in some form Well, I'll, t- I'll tell you fashion. why. It's because right as soon as you finish high school and you're getting ready to enter the real world, instead, you go to the church, you hand over everything, your phone, everything, girlfriend, get rid of it all, and say, all right, I'm going to go serve other people for two years. So you get sent on a mission. Um, I got sent to Bolivia and Brazil. I didn't know anything. I, I, dude, when I opened my mission call and saw Bolivia, I thought it was like in Europe, like Bulgaria. I didn't know where it was. So, um, but you get sent into this place where you have know nothing about anything, especially if you're going to a different country, you got to learn a new language and you just have to embrace this culture. And so uh, missionaries learn really good work ethic and work ethic translates into success in the real world. Like it's apparent there's more, there's probably more Mormon billionaires than any other religion besides maybe uh, Jews. Mm-hmm. There's, how, there's a lot of rich How Jews. long did you go to Brazil? Uh, two years. So I was in Bolivia. So See your family or no. So when I was wow. a missionary, dude, you leave home and you can call your mom and your family on Christmas. You can write a letter home one day a week. So I talked to my family twice in two years. And that still holds uh, like that. No, how they it changed. Is. They changed it over the la- when, when COVID hit, it changed the whole missionary program. Oh. Um, you could never, ever, ever be by yourself. Two years. I was never alone. you you have to be with inside of your companion. Really? Yeah. Wow. Do you pick your companion? Nope. What it's all it? chosen for you. Oh, dude. Did you have a cool companion? I've had the best companions, and I've had the worst companions. <laughs> I had, dude, my my, they, my trainer, the guy who, uh, when you get to the mission, it's an older veteran missionary who trains you in the area and teaches you everything. Um, my trainer was a 20, no, 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 a 29, 30-year-old uh, Peruvian kid who was going home the next month. Mm. And a lot of the Peruvians and the South American missionaries went on a mission because they, it, you don't get paid to go on a mission. You pay to do it. But their quality of life was better as a missionary than it was at home because the church mm-hmm. was paying for a nice apartment and stuff like that. So you'll see some some of them out there that are just there for the free ride, and his kid was there for the free ride. So it sucked. So I had to learn a new language. I had to learn how to be away from my family, 
and not have any contact with other humans and be stuck wow. with this guy 24 7 it Just was rough dweeb. yeah so I, but then my next companion was my, one of my best friends to this day in wow. fact hans who works for me my assistant his brother is my companion on the mission that's how we know okay. each other do you think that a lot of mormons after they they serve go into door-to-door sales it's huge it's one of the biggest industries when i was I would say nine out of my ten buddies. If you know, if I had a hundred friends, ninety of them went out and did door to door sales. Pest control. Yeah, uh, pest control and alarms. Alarms. Uh, Apex. Oh, well, Apex is now Vivint. Um, that I'd say eighty percent of the sales guys worked for them, and then there's a bunch of others that. Like I have a, a friend who started a really successful pest control company because he did door to door to door sales. Yeah. And he's still kicking ass with it. So. Oh, dude, I'd imagine dude. you get back and you're like, yo, I'm gonna yeah. just keep doing yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. Ben's, what you do. Ben's getting all the info on Mormons right now. Yeah. Dude, dude, hey, Ryan, Ryan, I'll, I'll give you the scoop on it. I've heard this whole soak up the soaking up the knowledge thing many many times, and I I agree with it. It's cool, but he, Ben is. I'm obsessed e- with the culture. I'm extremely interested in in the Mormon. You have religion. a Mormon vibe, I'll tell you that. You're considering uh, you do, I'm not, all you guys do honestly, actually. I'm okay. not, and I'll I'll tell like I'm not looking to become a Mormon, but I respect the religion and the culture and the work ethic so much because once well, you, you, you have I've a family seen. and kids, religion is going to become more important to you, mm-hmm. um, and it's just a natural thing that happens because you want to make sure that you are being the best thing you can for your kids as far as raising them. And you also want to make sure that they have roots outside of. So religious roots are cool because they're deep. They're really deep and they keep you anchored. People who don't have those kind of have shallow roots. Not that's kind of a general statement, but I have found that in general, people who don't have religious beliefs kind of have those shallow roots and anything comes along and just blows them away. And they just can't, they, they, they can't hold a job. They can't stay, um, in a relationship, like you, you, when you have these deep religious beliefs, it requires faith to believe in something that you can't see in order to be able to have faith, bro. That's not easy. Expecting something to happen that you don't know if it's going to happen, but you just believe 1000% that it's going to happen. Like that's not always easy, but that's faith. That's, that's the core of religious belief. So i like I said, you guys all have Mormon vibes because all we are is just, just like you guys, we just like to work hard. We try to be honest and we, uh, like to, you know, our big thing for our church is service. So uh, the culture of serving other people. So if you look at my content, most of it is we're doing service or something. Oh, like the sure, recoveries, dude. we don't get oh, paid true, for any yeah. of those. Yeah, we just go do it. You're just like, you got to be losing money on so many of those we recoveries. We, we lose a lot of money, but bro, it is so rewarding. Uh, so rewarding. It's, it's honestly, without it, I would be a very sad person, I think. 